all right all right guys welcome back to the channel in this video I'm gonna talk about rates your hustle got to be strong in this industry as in any other industry so before I get this video started I wanted to make a point real quick that these views are coming from the perspective of a driver an owner operator or a fleet driver this is the rates that are being discussed in this are coming from the perspective of an owner op or as I said fleet driver not from a carrier standpoint to where you're bidding on the load boards all in this is from the perspective of a driver working for a carrier working under somebody else's authority and that's the perspective this is coming from and you have to make that clear because in the videos that I'm talking about in this in this video uh, he's coming from the standpoint of an owner op if he's trying to mesh the two then he's really sending out a bad message because he's not making himself clear on that so I just wanted to make that point before I started that way you have a better understanding of where I'm coming from these rates are talking about from an owner operators perspective now what brings me to this topic is last night I was going through some comments on YouTube and watching other videos actually looking at comments on another video and I seen somebody that put a comment that said that myself and Eagle Express Andre I think is his name with Eagle Express uh, that's his YouTube channel and his business name uh, quoting us as saying that 80 cents per mile is a great rate now the first thing I want to say is I want to address that in in no way shape or form have I ever said that 80 cents is a great rate okay to be clear 80 cents is not a great rate 85 cents or better I've said is a solid rate that doesn't mean and I've said this before that doesn't mean you settle for that that's simply saying from a business perspective as a carrier that if you look along all the carriers that are that are taking on owner ops you look at the rates and you're gonna find that 85 percent is probably going to be on the top side on the top half of those rate scales okay so that's all I was saying is far as uh, talking about 85 cents now we as drivers and I've said this before but obviously certain people only want to pay attention to certain bits of information which is very frustrating because I do not like it when people for one misquote me or misrepresent what I stand for and what I believe I'm not okay with that at all so I have said before that drivers we should get paid as a driver way better than we get paid I can't tell you an exact amount because to be honest as much as I've been in this industry I don't have enough experience with direct customers to say hey you know 80% of my direct customers pay this rate so then you know and I would need to know that in order to be able to say hey this is what I think that the driver should get now just real quick the way it should be and the way it used to be is that the driver dealt directly with the customer but a lot of things happen I, I think it was in the 80s or something I'm not 100% sure so don't quote me on that uh, but there was uh, to when they regulated things as far as uh, inserting brokers and dispatchers you know well carriers you know working as uh, you know carriers and and brokers so they inserted those into the game and that built a wedge between driver and customer so with that being said that is just the that's just the reality of our industry today so you can sit and complain and cry about what rates are or you can you can come up with a plan on how to make the most of what you have available to you in this industry and what I mean by that is as I said you've we've created that wedge putting all these brokers and you got carriers in the middle and then you got the driver as an owner op and sometimes a driver for a fleet owner so to me the common sense is to okay how do I get these people that are from the customer to me how do I get them out of my way how do I get them out of my pocket how do I get them to quit taking any of my money 
So when I first started driving, I was a, I drove for a fleet owner, okay, and I averaged about 77 cents per loaded mile. Now, again, I mentioned it before, 77 cents 11 years ago went further than 77 cents a mile does today. But with that being said, 77 cents then, even then, wasn't good, okay? And I was able to go from driving for a fleet owner, which the common sense was, hey, if I want to make more money, I got to get the fleet owner out of my way. So that's what I did. I went and bought my own van. Now, just real quick. I don't know what some of these guys think that, you know, they, these guys like the one that I'm responding to pretty much in this video as far as, you know, saying that I'm representing a certain rate to be good and, and basically how he's representing me, you know, concerning rates. I didn't cry about the rate and then somebody decided to hand me four vans and operating authority and knowledge on how to you use all those things. Nobody did that. That isn't how it worked. That, that's not how it works. And that's unfortunately the mindset of so many drivers and so many people nowadays in general. It's like, oh, I'm crying because I know there's more money out there for us, but nobody's giving it to me. I do all the work. You might do all the work, but you obviously aren't putting yourself in a position. You obviously aren't. I don't even want to, because I'm not trying to make this as though I'm bashing certain, you know, people in general. But unfortunately our industry i've touched on it before low skill level you simply have to have a valid driver's license a good driving record uh i'd say you got to be 21 years or older because it does affect the rates as far as insurance which will make it very difficult for you to get in with anybody and then a heartbeat you have those things you can get into the industry you know, you can go get your CDL, you can hop in a van, you can go hop in a pickup truck with the trailer, you can go do all of those things to transport freight if you have those simple things. So with that being said, what that translates to is we are easily replaced. So we don't we don't have a lot of bargaining power, unfortunately, with the way things are. That's not to say we don't deserve it, that's not to say we can't try to get it. That's just simply say, stating the reality of the industry right now, how we are looked at as drivers, replaceable by, by brokers, by carriers, bringing on owner operators, whatnot. A lot of them, that's how they view it, just easily replaceable. Drivers are a dime a dozen. And then with that being said, you know, we, just, we drive the vehicle, okay? People say, oh, we do 90% of the work or 80% of the work. Okay, we do the majority of the work, but again, we aren't obviously being smart enough to put ourselves in a position to gain more of that money so that leads me back to where i was talking about when i drove for a fleet owner got my own van so i could cut the fleet owner out bam there's that then i'm like how else can i make more money oh i can grab more vans put drivers in them that's what i did i grabbed another van eventually grabbed another one then it was my plan all along was knowing that as a carrier by getting my operating authority I knew as a carrier I should make more money that's how I'm going to get more money because now I have to get the carrier out of my way because the carrier is the next thing in my way between myself and the brokers because obviously the brokers are gonna pay more than the carriers paying me as an owner op so that's what I did I cut that out now I have the option to get my broker authority if I choose to and then I can deal I can get on with these 3PLs and freight forwarders where all these brokers are going and getting a lot of this freight and bidding amongst each other. And I can then put myself in a situation that I can go and solicit larger uh, customers that have a larger volume of freight so I can use that broker's authority to broker out freight if I don't have enough assets to handle the freight directly through my carrier. So that is one of my options. Another option, even without the broker's authority, I can go out and try to solicit smaller customers and try to get just smaller loads that I can handle with my own assets, my own vans. So those are the options, and those are the options that I'm looking into. And what do I want to do that for? Because I want to try and get the broker's hand out of my pocket now. Again, if you want the majority of them, if you want all the money. You as a driver, as an individual, have to link up with this customer, okay? Right now, you have a gap between there and you have people taking money. 
That's the reality of this of the industry. If you can't grasp and accept that reality, you'll never make more than you're making and do better than you're doing. You need to understand that because this is not a simply, oh, boo hoo hoo hoo, I should get paid more. And they're going, oh, yeah. oh, I heard you crying. Well, here you go. 20, 40, 60, 80, 20, 20, 40, 40, 60. That don't happen, man. You got to work for it. Quit being, quit, quit being a victim and start just being proactive. And that's the thing that a lot of these drivers do. They they want to they want to be a victim. Like this guy specifically, I hear him commenting, or I've seen him commenting on this guy's video. Uh, give me one second. Okay, so I wanted to mention this guy's channel that this guy's been commenting on. It's called uh, Straight Talk Expediting. There's your plug, Straight Talk Expediting. I would suggest anybody go check it out. Form your own opinion. Don't take just my opinion on this, on what I'm about to say. So... This guy that made the comment about me saying 85 or 80 cents is a great rate, along with Andre, he commented on this guy. Oh, you're a breath of fresh air. You're you're waking drivers up, blah, 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 blah. So, and again, I'm not trying to bash this guy's channel. That that, that that's I've I've been hesitant on trying to reply to, or on, on replying to this guy because I want to do it in a productive way. Like, and I want and I'm trying to give it an opportunity. It's a newer channel. Just giving it an opportunity to see if anything ever comes. But so far, in all of his videos, he says, he basically repeats the mantra, we as drivers should get paid more. We should expect more. We should want more. We deserve more. Okay, that's what he continues to repeat. Hey, follow my channel, like my channel, subscribe to my channel, and we're going to make this happen. But so far, there hasn't been a single bit of information given on how do you do that that's that's my problem I, of course it's fine to complain or discuss things and how to improve things but if you're simply spewing just rhetoric which is meaning it's, it's just nothing that's worth any sustenance at all that's that's worth that's not anything that's where I have the problem and and again not trying to be negative towards this guy, but he hasn't he hasn't even suggested one one way in which to do that. You know, and this guy mentioned uh, Expedite Travels as well, Duncan. Oh, Duncan's the only other guy that bitches about it and says anything. Again, I like Duncan as a person, great guy. But again, where has there been any bit of information that's telling anybody how to improve their situation? Oh, I'm the man of the driver, I'm bitching for all the drivers. What are you doing to help the drivers I don't want nobody cheering me on and simply you know griping on my behalf help me do better and that's what I try to do with this channel in these videos and when I talk to anybody personally is I'm trying to help improve their situation I'm not simply calling and talking to somebody or somebody calling me or making videos just to say oh you guys you guys are really doing rough out there I, I feel you. yes we should do more yeah yeah we should do more and then they might ask oh well what can I do to do better well oh, hold on I got another call hey I'm gonna have to call you back later and they never call you back like that don't do no good to bitch for you like I need to help you if you truly want to help and you're able to help yourself I'm gonna try and give you the advice and the in the direction to do that these guys that just complain about rates, so far I don't see them giving any kind of advice. I just don't see it. To summarize, guys, as I said, there is a gap between a driver with the van, an owner-operator, and the customer, where the you because the customer is the one paying the money. We have too many things in between, and what you have to do, simply put, is you have to figure out how to cut those out. These guys, obviously, the transportation industry, trucks, big trucks, everybody has been complaining for years. They're not getting paid, you know, according to what they what they what they give. You know, they don't get enough, you know, reward in return for what they're giving and sacrificing. And I do, I agree with that 100. percent We are gone a lot of the time. We are away from our families. All of these things. I, I do want to touch on that real quick, though. It is rough. And you have to have somebody at home that's willing to work with you to make you able, you know, to make it able for you to be on the road and try to grow as a business and, and provide for your family. But at the same time, if all those things, like if those things are such a negative that you're like, oh man, but just my life is in total disarray because I'm just out here sacrificing, sacrificing so much. 
find another job. That's simply put. Don't keep crying and not improving your situation. Go find another job. Don't fucking put yourself in debt or in poverty or whatever trying to chase something that somebody somebody told you you could do, but you just don't have the ability or the uh, or willingness to put into it what you need to put into it to get out of it what you're wanting to get out of it. That's also that's another discussion in itself, man, just being able to do that. So you want to be able to get all those people out of your way, okay? Because unfortunately, that's what's in there. That's that's the simplest way that I can describe it. Now, again, throughout some of these videos I put out, I try to help people on how to do that. Again, being a driver for a fleet owner, you want to try and get your own van, but you want to do it smart. You don't want to put yourself in a major bind, and, and then the first major breakdown, you're going to fail. So once you've gotten your vehicle, what do you want to do? You want to grow a fleet to, to you know grow your income? Or... You're going to go get your operating authority and, and bring on owner ops. And if so, do you know what you should be bidding? Do you know where you should be at? Like these are all things that are discussed in videos here and there throughout my channel. I'm Again, you guys can complain. Everybody, I'm again, just going to reiterate, I'm 100% behind the fact that we as drivers should make more money. By far. Because again, that's the thing about that guy saying that I say it's a great rate and acting as though... I'm like the enemy. How am I going from being a driver for a fleet owner to being the enemy? How did I get there? If I am the enemy, if I am that guy that that is in a situation to be the guy ripping off all these drivers, how did I get there? How the F did I get there? Concentrate on that. Don't concentrate on trying to just portray me as an enemy. Try to fucking figure out how the hell I got there if that's what I am. Because that's obviously what you want. That's obviously what you're upset with. So, how did I get there? Concentrate on that. Quit concentrating on trying to hate on somebody. Quit, quit concentrating on being a crybaby all the time. Get out there and do the work, man, because it's out there. It is out there, guys. Obviously. There's Panthers and Load 1s and all that, you know? So, obviously, there's money out there. All right, guys, with that, I am going to get off here. I just wanted to put this out real quick because it was on my mind last night. Like, that got me fired up, man. And, and the person that commented, I think his name is uh, Chris Andrews. You ever want to hit me up, my email, everything APAX, and we can link up and I'll give you my phone number and we can talk on the phone. Because I'm, I'm, I'm okay with talking about things. I'm, a, I'm an open book. Like, I, like, there's nothing I hide. For people to view me as an enemy, I think you're just an idiot to think that. I do, I do so much for people and for free out of my own time and in my own energy to try to do for people and I'm not trying to say that to make me a saint or anything I'm just saying I do a lot to try and help people okay so to, to so if anybody ever has questions again comment in the video hit my email up I know I'm I know I'm bad about following up on emails at times but especially the comments I will see the comments quicker than I'll see my emails and I will try to link up with you guys like it, I know I've been bad about that too but I'm trying I'm trying to do what I can I have a family life I have a business I have a lot of things going on so it, it, it is difficult for me to find the time to have that conversation and the reason being because I don't want to have a five, ten minute conversation. The conversation, if you're really having a conversation about things and trying to help, it's probably going to be about an hour conversation. Unless somebody has one simple question that they just want answered and it's, it's pretty quick, cut and dry, maybe it might be a quick call. But for the most part, it's going to be an hour plus on these calls, man. People that have, that have talked to me on the phone, they can, they can attest to that. Like, it's a long phone call, man, because you get to talk one thing about another, about another, about another, about another. So, hit me up. You have problems with me? Hit me up, man. We can we can talk about it. So, with that, I'm out.